So I don't think I've ever discussed my personal actions for uh, blending interior images. So we're going to go ahead and uh, discuss that. So right over here in the top right hand corner, we've got Hunter Lomayespa's interiors workflow. These are basically all of my actions that I use to blend interior photographs for real estate. So basically, I, t I do a comp compositing method known as the side to side method, or at least that's what I call it. Um, so basically that is compositing your flash so it's lighting one frame, or I'm sorry, lighting one side of the frame and then moving that flash to light the other side of the frame and then combining those into one image in Photoshop. So it's a little bit confusing um, if you're not used to it, but with these actions, they're super easy to like get all these images out in like record time. So let's go ahead and discuss all these. Discussed all these? Discuss all these. Okay, so auto align layers, pretty simple stuff. It's basically going to select all of your layers and go to edit and then auto align layers. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's going to align the layers based off your image that you have visible right now. So if you have a flash shot with like a bunch of light stands and things like that and a bunch of blown out areas or whatever, it's not going to align very well because it doesn't have enough information to go off of. So that's why I typically use either a base flash shot or an ambient shot that's well exposed. So what you might have seen this a little bit earlier, but what it did was it scaled the image by about 2%. So a little bit, little bit of scaling going on here. So it removes all the edges that it leaves behind when you auto align the images. Um, basically, when you are auto aligning images, they will move and transform in a way that will create gaps in the document. So mainly in the edges of the document is where you're going to see those gaps. So this basically does that scaling for you. And I've noticed that if you don't do the scaling and you blur something, it blurs the edges, or at least it, tr it, it doesn't blur the edges. I'm sorry. And it kind of just makes it a little bit weird. I, I might show that off in a, in, a, in a future video of what it does, but you know, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, Reverse layers is pretty simple. It just takes all the layers and reverses them. Pretty basic. Gradient blend. This is where things get really cool, guys. So gradient blend is for your side to side layers. So we have our flash right, lighting left frame, and then vice versa. There we go. <laughs> and so I want to go ahead and do the gradient blend right now. So we're going to go ahead and click the play button and you might see that let me move this over here you might see that they're in the wrong order you see that the the flash stands should not be visible when you are doing this blend so if you if you ever put the flash layers in the wrong order you can actually go ahead and use the curve to adjust that the blending so i use the preset negative that basically just inverts the curve and uh, switches around the, the gradient. So pretty sweet stuff so far. Let's go ahead and click OK. And then we got a brightness and contrast. What this basically does, it allows you to adjust the mask before painting it. So you can get a little bit more accurate mask. So you can see what's going on here. Now take a look at what's happening here on the, the layer uh, preview. You can see the more I push it to the left, the less white I'm getting, the more I push it to the right, the more white I'm getting. So I'm going to put it about right there at negative 20. Contrast basically makes the blend sharper or, or I'm sorry, it makes the blend smoother or sharper. So negative contrast, smoother, positive contrast, sharper. So I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm going to go with like negative 50 and then basically it will allow you to adjust this manually. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust my brush size and I'm going to paint black because based off the preview, black 
is where it's hiding our left, I'm sorry, our right side flash. So let's go ahead and get out of that and just paint black right here, just like so. And that's not visible, but this is visible. And I know this is gonna be an issue because when we go to blend in this layer, this is gonna to wanna to stay here. So we need to go ahead and fix that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just paint, paint white just to get rid of that. I'm not too worried about this, I'm just worried about that. So cool beans. That is pretty much almost done. Now what we're gonna now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the split flash blend. Now split flash is basically taking your base flash layer and splitting it into two blend modes. Those blend modes being lighten and darken. So let's go ahead and play this. So using the brush tool, paint white to reveal the ambient layer set to darken mode. So basically this is where you paint out any reflections or hot spots or anything like that. So I think right here is looking pretty, pretty hot. So I think that looks really good so far. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click play. And now we can paint the light and blend mode part. Now, I don't think I need the light and blend mode part, to be honest, maybe a little bit here, but honestly, that's just looking a little bit too much. Um, let's see, maybe over here, probably over there. It's really good for kind of getting your foreground to be a little bit more illuminated. So if you're working with a bigger room, and you do the side to side method, you might end up with parts of furniture that are too dark. And when you go to blend the ambient, they're not gonna pick up on the color that's in the shadow. And that can be an issue. So this is kind of like where the, the light and blend mode comes in handy. It, it gives you that information that you need for when you blend the ambient. Speaking of blending the ambient, we got a lot of actions that we can use for blending ambient. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six. I can count Sesame Street. Uh, okay, so manual, normal, ambient, blend, hide all. This is basically your normal blending without um, luminosity. So this is what you're blending in and this is what your preview is and we can just paint white to reveal. I don't use this very much, but I know some people use it um, for people who uh, will adjust their ambient beforehand and blend it so they don't have any like color contamin no color shifting issues that can sometimes happen with flash frames. So I'm gonna delete that and turn on the visibility of the layer. You may have noticed that some of the, uh, actually all of these will duplicate the layer and turn off the original. So if you ever needed to, you can delete the orange layers and go back to the original without having to remove luminosity masks and um, changing blend modes back to what they were before. So that's pretty handy. So no manual normal blend show all is pretty much the same thing except with a white layer mask. So basically it will set the, 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 the brush swatch to black and you can just paint out whatever you need. Get rid of that. Manual Luminosity Ambient Blend Hide All is like the first one, except it's luminosity instead of normal blend mode. So if you look at the luminosity, it's taking the color of the underlying layer and using that brightness value of the, lumin of the ambient layer and, and not any of the color. So that's pretty, pretty damn cool, if you ask me. I, th I think that's pretty awesome. So that's pretty much your standard kind of like blending. Um, so luminosity, ambient blend, mode, manual, show all. Basically the same thing except it's inverted so you can just paint out any of the areas that you don't need but work with more ambient light. But I don't really use these ones all that much. I use the automatic ones because I feel like they do a pretty good job. So let's go ahead and click this and you're gonna be greeted with a little color range prompt and we're gonna set this preview to grayscale. So all the white in the image is what's being masked out. So basically your highlights. If you adjust the fuzziness, 
you can make it so it's only uh, going to select the window or you can make it so it's going to select even more of the image and give you more of a flashier look. So uh, higher the number, more flash, lower the number, more ambient. I like to go with something in the middle, like around 40. Let's go ahead and click OK. And it's going to do all the blending for you. And you can see by the mask, it's negated all of this information that we've selected and only blended this portion. And it's blurred it so it's a little bit smoother and more organic, like if you were painting it. So it makes it easier to adjust and stuff like that. But I don't like the way it looks for normal because this room is really contaminated with color casts. So I'm going to go with automatic luminosity ambient blend and we're gonna go ahead with, uh, da, 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 da. I'm gonna go with like a more flashy look because I think the flash frame looked pretty good. Let's go with like 60, click okay. It's gonna do all the, the blending and it's gonna output your image. So it's in luminosity blend mode. As you can see, it's only blended a little bit, but I think it looks pretty good. This, these next ones are, this next one is actually pretty simple. It's not too fancy, it's just like a color layer. So if I ever want to sample an area like this, or maybe this and paint it on here, I can do that. Maybe use a little bit more of a prominent color. So if I can do that, it's only painting the color and not the brightness, if that makes sense. So it's really easy for getting like, um, for getting rid of your flash reflections in like wood or when you have luminosity color shifting, it's really easy to just to sample an area and just paint. So I really dig that. I don't use it very often, but I like that it's there. This is where things get freaking cool. <laughs> so advanced color decontamination is probably the most complex action I've ever made since Seamless. Let's go ahead and click play. Now it's gonna say, adjust the sliders in the black and white adjustment prompt to protect specific colors. You might be wondering, what does that even mean? Basically, if we went to default, it's kind of going off of just your highlights. It's basically a very general highlights mask. But if we bring in something like the yellows, we can bring them up to make them more selected or we can bring them down to make them not selected. So anything that's white or gray is going to be selected and masked and anything that's black will not. So I think this looks pretty good. Maybe the reds, not seeing too much of change there. Greens, no. Cyans, no. Blues, no. Magentas, no. So it's mainly just the yellows. Let's go ahead and click okay. Now it's gonna look a little bit weird so it's gonna say, using the brush tool, paint white to desaturate the color red. And as you can see, based off this preview, is we have quite a bit of red in this comforter. So we're gonna go ahead and just use the brush tool, maybe resize it, make it a little bit softer. And we're just gonna paint out that red. Just getting rid of all that red. Cause there shouldn't be any red in this. It's a uh, Pretty neutral room. So once you're done with that, just click play. It'll go on to the next color, which is yellow. And there's a lot of yellow in this room. There's too much yellow. So we're gonna go ahead and just desaturate some of this yellow. And it's not gonna get any of these like greenish yellows because we masked out those uh, those colors. Now it doesn't get rid of all of them, all the colors, all the colors that you have selected, doesn't get rid of all of them, because you still want some tonality in those colors. So you don't want to like seriously desaturate them to the point where there's no color whatsoever. It's just not going to look realistic. So I'm just going to go ahead and just clean this up just a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and press play. Now greens, there's a lot of green in this. What is this called? Curtain, I wanted to say window blanket. Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and get rid of those. Click 
quick play once you're done. Cyan's, not a lot of cyan's we have to deal with, except maybe right there. Click play once you're done. Color blue, not much blue here. I think we're good. Click play, magenta, ugh, magenta. Where's magenta? I don't think there's a lot of magenta in this one. Oh, look at that, right there. You thought you could get away, but my eyes are too special. <laughs> oh, I have special eyes. Click play, and then you're done. So before, a little bit uh, warmish in tone. Now a little bit more neutral, but still having a little bit of color in there. Pretty nifty. And then the last one is just to flatten the image before you export it back into Lightroom. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to put the download link in the description of the video, so check that out. And I want you guys to test it, because I really like using it, and I think you guys will uh, have some fun using it as well. So that's pretty much it. It's 2 a.m. It's time to go to bed. Later, guys.